<laughs> if you use words how they're meant to be, then, you know. But yes, it is used in place of like, or to just really show aggression and all this. So, you know, but again, if it's a local thing and, you know, well, everyone else is doing it, then let them do it. Let them eat cake. And then chop off their heads. Yes. They're Scottish. They'll keep drinking. Exactly. They're like fish. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and again, there is no segue. Uh, China's answer to high divorce rates. Love letters sent with a seven-year delay from September 13. Postal authorities in Beijing have come up with a novel solution to soaring divorce rates. Love letters sent with a seven-year delay. The new service allows couples in the first flush of romance to post a letter their partner will only receive seven years later. The China Daily reported saying that when, uh, saying that was when relationships often begin to cool. Divorce is becoming increasingly common in China. In Beijing, the divorce rate has risen from 11,582 in 2004 to 21,013 last year, according to government data. Special envelopes... Data? Special envelopes containing a card from a personalised message... For a personalised message, duh. Went on sale in Beijing on September 9, considered auspicious because the word 99 in Chinese sounds similar to the word forever. Couples who marry in one of the capital 17 registration offices will also receive one of the envelopes. We hope that love letters may ha- may save some marriages in the future, a postal office surname Ma told Global Times Daily. But some people were less enthusiastic about the plan. It'd be more than depressing if I received a love letter from seven years ago and I was no longer with my then loved one. Ha, ah, I got it right this time. University graduate son Lubin told the China Daily. Hmm. Hmm. So, yes. I guess it depends on the situation because, I mean, I guess maybe in China, that's, you know, seven years is when things start to cool off, but for most people, it's usually within, like, second to third year. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is the whole seven-year itch thing, you know. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Well, and the thing is, what people don't understand is the reason why, well, here at least, the reason why um, divorce rates are so high here is because we have places like Vegas, where you can get rip-roaring drunk, you can go out and you can marry whoever you want, and claim whatever you want, you know, just some sort of like, you know, wasn't mentally capable or something. Mm-hmm. And you can go have it annulled. So, well, you know... Uh, well, that technically isn't divorce. I've been annulled. Have you? Mm-hmm. Aww. And it was really funny because when I walked into the courthouse to become annulled, um, they all looked at me like I was a freak. And they were like, we haven't done that in like 20-something years. We don't know what to do now. <laughs> uh, there's a book somewhere. I'm pretty sure yeah, it's so I big. had to. So I had to go get a lawyer, and then I had to go stand before a judge, and all this. It was, ah. Mm. Yeah. And only then, only then, after I went through all of that trouble, while I am standing on the stand, I am not kidding you, while I am on the stand giving my testimony to this judge, the lawyer tells the judge Rebecca Smith realizes that she didn't actually have to go through the trouble of coming to court, but she wanted to do this just to make sure no future problems arose. And I, the first thought that went through my head was, I didn't have to do this, and you made me get up at 9.30 in the morning while I'm pregnant to come into a courtroom, stand up here, nervous as hell. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I need to pee. Um. <laughs> no, luckily, I was a little pregnant, so it was more so of, i got to throw up. <laughs> Yeah, you make me sick in more ways than one. Yes. Okay, so on to our heavy hitter. Yes. So um, I'll give out the same warning that I gave the last time. Um, For those of you who um have children or who are currently pregnant with children um, or anyone that just Even respects is very children. sensitive. Yeah. yeah, anyone who respects children or any way, um, this is not... 
a nice for one. the week of heart. Mm. It is. This is very sad. Um, so listen, and then afterwards we'll play a song to kind of help boost everyone back up. Yes. Atlanta couple gets life for starving their six-year-old son from September 13th. Georgia's Supreme Court has sentenced an Atlanta couple to life in prison for starving its infant son, rejecting claims by the defense that vegan rules were to blame. Six-week-old Crown Shakur weighed three and a half pounds when he died in 2004 from extreme malnourishment or starvation. His parents, Jade Jade Sanders and Lamont Thomas were convicted Monday of malice murder, felony murder, involuntary manslaughter, and the cruelty to children. Honestly, I would have taken out the involuntary manslaughter, but then again, on top of everything else, doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. No matter how many times they want to say, we're vegans, we're vegetarians, that's not the issue in this case, Prosecutor Chuck Boring told the court. The child died because he was not fed, period. Bottles of soy milk, not formula, and apple juice, as well as a dirty, rancid baby bottle, were found during a police search of the couple's bucket's apartment. This was not a well-nourished child on any level, but it sounds like this had more to do with not getting enough calories or protein in overall, or excuse me, protein overall than a vegan diet, said Keith Ayab, director of Rose R. Kennedy Center Nutrition Clinic at Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York. (gasps) Okay. Mm. Veganism does not starve an infant. Babies need at least 10 ounces of liquid food per day, with the healthy range spanning from 16 to 30 ounces, according to Dr. Ira Rubin, a private practice pediatrician. I did it this time. Sorry. Huh. <laughs> in Naperville, Illinois. Since the baby lost around half of its weight. Okay, so the baby was three and a half pounds when it died. Lost around half. So that's seven pounds. So Mm -hmm. seven seven pound baby being reduced down to three and a half pounds. Yeah, that's just a little bit noticeable. There's no excuse. Exactly. Since the baby lost around half of its weight, it sounds like they certainly did not feed the infant enough volume. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that babies breastfeed for the first six months, a practice that, if manageable, conforms to vegan ideals. And for vegan women who can't or choose not to breastfeed, Soy milk-based formulas are available. Soy milk, however, is not a substitute for fortified formula. So basically this woman got literal soy milk, not soy milk formula. Mm -hmm. The prosecutors also argued the couple neglected their child by not seeking medical attention as his body wasted away. To me, even if the parents did not understand what to feed the baby, all they needed to do was ask. Now, all they had to do is ask the doctors, the nurses at the hospital they delivered at, or even go back to their doctor's office to ask why the baby is losing so much weight. Reuben said, as more adults adopt the vegan diet, more babies and children are inheriting it. Alicia, Alicia Silverstone, three-month baby, Blue, mm-hmm. is reportedly vegan. Natalie Portman dropped, Portman dropped her vegan diet during pregnancy in favor of a more flexible vegetarian diet. Experts say the vegan diet can be complete and nutritious for the whole family, as long as it contains enough protein, calcium, and vitamins D and B12. But fussy young eaters can complicate things. They can complicate things even on like a normal diet, so obviously being very picky about what you're eating is even worse. Mm. Anytime you remove a food, you place a bigger burden on the remaining foods to pick up the slack, said Ayab. I recommend that vegan parents in the early years remain flexible. Let philosophy take second string to the child's nutritional needs, at least until they're older and can make decisions for themselves. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the first time that I read the story, I pointed out the fact or the irony of this, and I'm not by any means trying to make it funny. No, this um, one's dead. Normally, n- normally in this kind of situation, I would – joke and I would laugh, but being a parent, I just, I can't. But the irony of the situation is the whole point of a vegan diet is to get away from anything that is processed. And that means, you know, killing animals and all this. So why is it okay to kill your child, but not kill an animal? Yep. It shits me completely. And yes, I use that word because it is that strong a feeling that they get life for killing their child. 
personally, yeah. I think they should get the death penalty. Oh, yeah. No death row. I mean, straight to and, and I think they should pull out the chair for this one. Yep. Or even better, let them die the same way their child died. I agree. I agree entirely. Just I, I had the same thought uh, when I heard a story um, a few mo- a few months back about this woman neglecting her child because um, of Facebook games. 